they're restocking the shelves here at Goodwill and I've noticed two things. The first, this beautiful melamine tray with hydrangeas on it, but much more exciting is what's underneath. Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. We are here at Cheyenne's Commons Marketplace here in Las Vegas and just pulling up here to the Goodwill, which is on my right hand side here. Lots of parking spaces, so hopefully it's not too terribly busy. I've got my Thrifting Vegas blanket and my reusable shopping bags on the seat next to me. So let's grab a parking spot and we'll go inside. Let's go thrifting. We are here walking up to Goodwill and I thought it would be fun to do a little challenge today. I am going to see if I can find a treasure to thrift in every aisle of the hard goods. There's going to be a new colour tag of the week. It looks through the door like it is purple. What does that mean? It means that all items that have a purple price sticker are 50% off from Tuesday through Sunday. And then on the Monday, they go down to just $1. They do this because here in Las Vegas, Goodwill gets so many donations. They need to regularly clear out inventory to make room for new treasures. If you watch my channel, you'll know that in my last video, I tried out a new segment after my shopping haul. I showed you the top five items from the previous trip that received the most interest and sold for the most profit. I received such positive feedback from everybody. Thank you so much that I will be making that a regular feature. Here we are in the hard goods section. Now let's see if we can find a treasure to buy in each and every aisle. It looks like we're starting off in the wood and frames, plaques and signs. What's this? A little parcel of coasters. I love the top one, but it seems that the others are just plain wood. What does that say? Great Dane. That is a shame because the top one is very interesting. Let's keep going to see what else there is. Oh, what's the sign behind here? Family. I love the font of this with the weathered look uh, on the boards. Sweet Bird and Company. That's weird. The hanger. Looks like it's upside down there, but no matter, that can be fixed. Actually, you probably don't even need to use that hanger. You can just put in a little nail and uh, hang that crossbar, the crosswood on there. Let's see, we've got some cutting boards, some plaques and signs here, a little doll. Ooh, look at this rooster back here. Looks like someone has painted this fellow on a board it is a signed piece only two dollars absolutely fantastic quite whimsical it is stamped on the back as well let's pop this into our cart i'm always picking things up moving things around to make sure that i don't miss anything don't forget to look all the way at the back of the shelves no, that isn't, is it? I thought for a second that this might be Kurok, but it's actually a black lacquered piece with a gold painted design. Unfortunately, it is in rough shape. I don't know if you can see the scratches. This one as well, sadly, quite a few chips and dings, which are very hard to repair. This, on the other hand, although in rough condition, is made of wood. It's a Hawaii tray. It's only $2, extremely sticky and manky. It's really yucky. It needs a good wash, but we are absolutely going to grab that. And I am going to restore it with some um, 
mineral oil and I will show you how to do that at the end of this video. A little music box there. You can probably put photos in the top. I think I have just spotted a bucket list item. This is pretty too, a covered lacquered box. It's textured. Let's put that over here for just a second. And oh my goodness, it's got about 10 years of sticky grease on it, but $4. This is a bronze gold colored Hager USA riser. I can't believe it. It's only $4, a really hard to find color. Let's lift it like this and pop it in the cart. It needs a really good scrub. There are new carts coming out as we speak. I quite like these two little Japanese wedding dolls. Sadly, they are a bit worse for wear, so we'll leave them. But this is fabulous. The design is raised up. It's in really good shape, $4. It's signed on the bottom. Let's pop that into our cart. This piece is interesting, but I think it is modern. Let's look. It's got a barcode on the bottom, very... Uh, contemporary decorative. Here is another lacquer tray. This one is Otagiri, a hummingbird. I think all these pieces came from the same place and uh, didn't get washed. This one has a bird on it. Only sell for about 12 to $15, so we will leave them. They're restocking the shelves here at Goodwill and I've noticed two things. The first, this beautiful melamine tray with hydrangeas on it, but much more exciting is what's underneath. Pretty trays like this sell really, really well for me. This one's in good shape. It's only $2, so we will take that. But look at this vintage tile. It's absolutely incredible. I would guess it's from the 60s, probably Spanish. Only $2, the subject matter and the colors are fabulous. Let's definitely get that carefully into our cart. We'll keep going here to make sure we don't miss anything. Some little rice balls here. I think these are modern ceramic. Looks like someone's already peeled the sticker on the bottom to see if they're signed. I do like little mismatched sets like this. They add interest to your table, um, much more so than having sets that are all the same. This is Ganesha, the god of wisdom and prosperity in the Hindu religion. He looks to be in great shape with no damage, only 99 cents, so we will take him with us. What else do we have here? I'm scanning the shelves. Some vases, candle holders. Those are glass. They don't have the sparkle of crystal. Down here is a Star Wars droid. This piece is a bank. It's brand new. They're asking $6 on it. The slot is there. Sadly, only worth about $12 for resale. These pewter framed collector plates are numerous on eBay, so I'm going to leave that on the shelf. This is a really interesting pumpkin candle. I like the style, $4, but sadly the finish appears to be wearing away. I'm not sure why that is. Very scratched, sadly. I was thinking how I could fix it, but uh, I think it's beyond repair. Some glasses down here. Let's put this one with its friends. A modern set uh, in depression glass style. More plates down here. Let's grab that other one and I'll put it down here as well. We're moving into the candle holders and the clear glass in this section. 
quite a few familiar pieces that have been here a little while blue tags oh look at this green tags came out today they're just putting them out on the shelves a beautiful ceramic quail look at the detail of his feathers we'll definitely grab her lots and lots of crystal and glass bowls oh this is interesting this is a happy and sad tiki glass. Happy one side, sad on the other. It has a lid that I'm not sure is original to the piece, but it does quit, fit quite nicely if you're inclined to use it as a candy jar. I'm just going to rummage. Uh, I have a little keychain mini black light on my purse right here. We're just gonna see if it glows by chance. No, not UV reactive. Um, if you are interested in picking up a little keychain black light for yourself, they are available uh, both in my eBay store and on my website at thriftingvegas.com. Let's get this guy into the cart. The last section of this aisle is figurines and collectibles. Little taper candle holder there. This piece is a project piece we've seen before. Cupcake bank, lots of collector plates back here. Oh, wait a minute. I see some flowers. This is Polish pottery. Look at that beautiful hand paintedness. It is stamped. I'm not going to attempt the pronunciation of that. It's $4. It does need a new clock mechanism, but uh, those can easily be replaced. It's in lovely shape, so we'll definitely grab that. All sorts of dolls down here, some baggies. I'm looking all the way to the back, seeing some pumpkins here. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Salt and peppers and some decorative ones, candle holders, Santa, a mug, oh she is pretty, unfortunately her flute is broken, but I believe I have sold these before, little trinket boxes, is it trendsetter? Taste Setter Sigma. Sadly, because of the break, we will leave her. And this Sphinx is interesting, but he too is damaged. We're in a new aisle, the vases, planters, and florals. We've had great luck so far finding more than one thing in each and every aisle. So let's see how we do here. Little Asian piece. I think it is a florist vase, the kind you would receive an arrangement in. Crown Royale. Some mugs here. Some inexpensive planters and candle holders. I think we've seen this one before. Looks like uh, a heavenly bamboo planter. Lots and lots of modern pieces. Ooh, a rather scary looking monkey here. Oh, but behind him is a hand-thrown pot. Look at this. This reminds me of one we found a month or so ago. It looked like a beehive. It's fantastic, so unique, only $4. It needs a good wash. It's got some dust and bits on it, but uh, don't be afraid to pick up dirty things that uh, can easily be washed clean. We'll keep going. Another candle holder here. Bit worse for wear, very scratched that. Our anchor hocking Christmas carafe still there. That does actually have matching glasses that a couple of you pointed out. These are coasters. They are either marble or granite with an inlaid 
uh, stripe diagonally. I really like the look of those. The stripe almost has a drip glaze or oil paint look to it. They're in nice condition, three of them, $3. Let's pop those into our cart. As long with the vase there, we've got wreaths, some trays, more planters and pots. Let's see, a basket there. Ooh, some cobalt glass here. Look at these pieces. I think this one is the only one that is hand thrown, handmade, a dollar on this glass piece. I don't know if you can see the recycled look of it. The swirls there tell me that that is hand blown and recycled. The other two pieces, this candle holder and the picture back there, I think are modern mass produced pieces. We've got baggies of filler and decorative fruit. The blue on this florist vase is pretty, very lightweight, inexpensive. Clear vases, some silks and candle holders. This red vase is flash painted. I don't know if you can see on the top here where the paint is flaking off. It's not actually red glass through and through. Souvenir piggy bank. This piece is Ikea. Ikea pieces used to sell quite well for me, uh, but now there seem to be an awful lot of them available on eBay and they don't sell as quickly. Blue swirly glass plate here. This is very, very scratched, so we'll leave it. So that is a resin sleeping puppy. Probably big lots, that one. Down here is an enormous vase. The pattern reminds me of a little jar I have in my inventory. Perhaps I'll bring that out to show you in my haul. This is a made in China piece. The quality is just not there. So we will leave that. Some easels, plaques and signs. Down here is a turned wood vase. These are great for silks or wooden flowers. I actually have one of these in my inventory. I'll bring it out into the hall. This is a bamboo box. Not ever such good quality like some of them are. This poor basket is very worse for wear. Oh, look at this cross. This is a decorative piece. Nice design, Demdarko, I believe. It is modern, but decorative crosses and wall crosses sell ever so well for me. Several of you collect them, so I am going to grab this. Oh, look at this. This piece is vintage and in beautiful condition. As you can see, the tile is in good shape, no scratches, as is the wood. It doesn't look like it was ever used, maybe just displayed. $2 on this piece, and I am going to pick it up just because of the fantastic condition it's in. Here we are in the metal section and I absolutely love these old fashioned nut crackers. You put your nut in the hole, bring the arm down and it cracks it. This one is a truck, Chestnut Creek it says. It's $4. Now sadly these don't sell too well on eBay. Lots listed, none sold so we are going to leave it on the shelf. Lots of sconces here, wine racks, candle stands. Here is a camel. This holds a taper candle. It's quite crude, probably world market brand or something similar. Lots of baskets and organizers. We've got some silver tone bread baskets, platters, and even a toast rack here. I'm a little bit concerned leaving that nutcracker. We're not going to find anything else. The shelves aren't ever so full. That's a bit worse for wear, isn't it? We've got some buckets, more candle holders. 
lots more toast racks and some inexpensive trivets. I have never understood the concept of a toast rack. When I have my toast, I want it nice and hot so the butter's all melty, not cold in a rack. Look at this owl napkin holder. Unfortunately, it's not very good quality and a bit scratched up there. I do like the concept though. We are here in everyone's favorite, the kitcheny bits. <laughs> the clear section is first. Quite a nice little cubist creamer there. And oh my goodness, look at this. It's an oversized butter dish. It's crystal with a handle on the lid absolutely love this piece just checking it over it doesn't appear to have any damage and I didn't know this but apparently on the east coast sticks of butter are long and skinny and on the west coast they're short and fat and this has to do with the machines that um, made them how they were designed and I thought that was just fascinating so you need to buy a <laughs> uh, uh, butter dish depending on which coast you live this is quite a nice old piece we're just going to see with my black light if it glows i don't think it does it doesn't have any kind of fluorescence there it's just a pretty etched piece these pieces are still here sadly not too much resale value in those either let's try to light these up now, as you can see, just the blue glow from the light itself. No hint of green or yellow. Here's a bulldog cookie jar. This is quite fun. The quality isn't very good, though. He's not very heavy, and I think he would chip very easily. Let's go across here. A pasta jar. It's missing its cork top, sadly. It's a nice swirled pitcher. And a glass dome. I'm not entirely sure that this base goes with the dome. It looks like a mini microwave plate. And I think I have a couple of extras of those at home waiting to find their wood base. They tend to show up separately. What else can we find? Lots of baking dishes and platters as usual kettles and salad spinners sweet little saucer here definitely a more contemporary piece that little brown cup there is actually a piece that goes with a tea set that I have in inventory. I don't think it's missing a cup, but I do need to bring it out because it's taking up an awful lot of storage space. When you see it, you're going to say, yes, that's exactly what was on the shelf. Another one of those cups. We got muffin tins here, all sorts of pots and pan lids, travel mugs. There's an anchor hocking, uh, checkerboard, apple, carafe there. They don't have as many utensils as they usually do here. It's a bit sparse. We'll have to go check on the baggy wall. There's quite an interesting white lidded canister at the back here for $3. Sadly, only one. It's Cook's Club. This is a fun Starbucks tumbler. $3 on that. Sadly, they don't sell very well, those uh, mugs actually sell better. We are round the other side in the mug section, and I have spotted something interesting. This looks like it says Dr. Seuss. It's the cat in the hat. This is a really fun sort of schoolhouse version. We've got a chalkboard and some paint splotches. Inside it says the cat in the hat. It's $2. I just can't resist that. In the cart it goes. Let's keep going to see see if we can find anything else we can't walk away from. We've actually done really, really well finding something in almost every aisle so far. I think the only one where I decided um, not to grab the treasure was the metal aisle 
with the truck nut cracker. I'm really trying just to purchase treasures that I know will sell quickly. I am determined to reduce my inventory now that I no longer have uh, my vintage booth. I would really like everything to come in and go out efficiently. Let's see, we are in the glasses and tumbler section now. This is another section where I need to be ultra picky. I have quite uh, a few glasses in stock. This is fun. The glass half empty or half full. I'll have half a glass of wine. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely need to bring out all my glasses and um, put those on sale. These are pretty poinsettias for Christmas. What else? They are actually separated quite nicely into sets today. We've got margarita glasses and martini glasses, wine glasses and tumblers juice glasses actually the trend now seems to be going to stemless wine glasses not only do they fit better in cupboards but you can actually uh, put them in the dishwasher without fear of them breaking you just need to be really careful that they don't rub up against each other because that's when they scuff and break this fellow appears to be lost he's five dollars and a bit broken we are in the plates, bowls, and dish aisle here, having a look to see what they have. Oh, at the back is a vintage chip bowl here. It's flash painted on the bottom with sort of a carnival glass red shimmery paint. As you can see, sadly, it is wearing off. So we'll leave that. It's also missing its little chip bowl friend, which we'll have to keep an eye out for. This is a lovely chintz pattern. It doesn't look old English though. It's a Japanese piece. Let's see. It's a pretty little iris bowl here. Unfortunately, massive crack down the side. We'll leave that. Oh, here it is. Here's the chip, the dip bowl for the chip. That too is a bit worse for wear. The flash is coming away. We'll put it with its big friend there. So hopefully someone will come along and love the pair. This is quite a nice vase. A bit lightweight though. It uh, has the look of pottery, but it's actually mass produced. Big set there, it's quite nice. All sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. Oh, look at this. A lovely little vintage divided pink glass piece. I love the handles on that. They're almost like little fleur de lis there. And the pink is a gorgeous, rich, almost salmony color. So let's pop that into our cart. A few of you have asked me um, to bring out the pink glass that you saw in my vintage booth. So that is stacked in a box in my garage, but when I find it, I will definitely bring all those pieces out and make them available to you. We've got a tart dish there, really big reverse painted bowl, some crystal. As I always say, if you need extra pieces for the holidays, for Easter, um, to give your friends and families cookies or desserts to go, come to Goodwill and then you don't have to worry about uh, giving away your good china and possibly not getting it back for a while. And your friends and family go home with a lovely new plate. I came over here to check the baggie wall, but on the electronic testing station is this lovely little ceramic basket. It's $3. It's got wild strawberries all over it. Perfect for spring and Easter. It looks to be in great shape, so let's grab that. If your Goodwill has a baggy wall, be sure to check it often. I have found sterling silver flatware, 
figurines, salt and pepper shakers. Speaking of which, I am seeing Disneyland on this shaker here that only appears to be one in here along with some plain ones. But look at this little cat. I wonder if it has a mate. It does, a pair of salt and pepper cats. And these plain shakers are wonderful to display vintage hat pins in. Let's keep going. Lots of stationery and craft supplies, Christmas ornaments, lots of pins and clips and sticky notes. Fantastic if you have children or grandchildren. Not sure what those are. Possibly little votive candle centerpieces. Cards and invitations. Stickers and gift bags, some paper clips in there. Oh, look at this. This is a cross stitch kit. It's absolutely lovely. The, gar the potting shed, it's like a garden shed. Potting shed is a very English term. It's only $4. It's absolutely lovely. Look at that. What a wonderful scene. We'll definitely grab that piece. Keep going. All sorts of odds and ends here. Curling ribbon, bubbles. You just never know what you're going to find up here. Even some lemons over there. We've got stamp pads and ink. Paper plates, I can see. But it was a time when those stamping up pads were very sought after and they resold for quite a bit. These days, uh, there are quite a lot available. And there's even a mango in with these lemons. That's very fancy. <laughs> Unfortunately, these are a bit worse for wear. Their lemons past their prime. I think they've been squished up against some other fruits that have left some marks on there those plastic grapes tend to do that so i think we are going to leave these on the wall here we are taking our usual stroll through the small appliances into the art section here they have small pieces with lots of little frames canvas art and prints this is quite a fun piece, but it's just glued on to a backing there. Let's see if anything exciting jumps out at us. Again, similarly to the plates, if you need frames for pictures, uh, they make great gifts. Do visit your local thrift store. Uh, you can usually get a really good deal on something that uh, often costs quite a pretty penny at uh, a regular retail store. Some model home art here, as I call it, canvases. I'm flipping through for vintage looking frames that often give a clue that there might be something good uh, popped inside. Do take time to go through all of the artwork. Flip through if it's stacked up. You never know. This is quite a nice uh, wild horse piece. Often you can find nice mirrors in this section. That could double as a tray, actually, couldn't it? A tray for either drinks or a collection. I'm taking a look at the jewelry today. They have just restocked this cabinet and it is full of treasures. Let's see, all sorts of different pieces. Just having a preliminary scan here as I wait for somebody to come help me. I am going to choose this elephant absolutely lovely this uh, scrolled necklace 
these are quite fun they're not as old as I thought they were so I might leave those behind Here on my table is everything we found at Goodwill, as well as a few items from my vintage booth and some jewellery and Easter bits I thought you might enjoy. Let's start over here with the items we found. First, perfect for Easter, is this lovely Demdarko cross. It has beautiful colours, he makes all things new. You can stand it up on display like so. Or it does have a hook hole in the back so you can pop it on the wall. Uh, the designer is Holly Christine. I paid $4 for it and I am asking $22. Next, this lovely set of three coasters. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're a white marble and in the center, I believe it is glass, almost like a slag glass. It has swirls of blue and green. All three of them uh, do each a little bit different. You could either use them as coasters or you could even use them to display treasures something like that or salt and peppers would also look nice on those if you have plants they could also be a plant stand or all three together a riser i believe i paid two or three dollars for the set and I am asking $18 for the set. I teased you with this sweet little quail, didn't I? She's absolutely lovely. Look at the detail of her feathers. We paid $1.99. She has some white felt on the base to prevent scratches. Just lovely, no damage to her. I paid $2 and I am asking $18. Next, I cleaned it up. <laughs> this beautiful lacquered box. The design, I don't know if you can see, is applied. It's raised up. Beautiful tree and little house here. The inside is red. Perfect for snacks or little cookies whatever you would like. On the bottom, it says bam, I thought it said bamboo. Maybe it does, Okinawa. I paid $4 for it. I am asking $22. Next, we have our beautiful wood marquetry tray. It's a souvenir from Hawaii. I'm not sure of the date, but as you can see, um, it does need a little bit of TLC. I washed it with some warm soapy water because it had a layer of yucky sticky on it and that uh, came off nice and easily. But after this haul, together we will apply some mineral oil to it and uh, you will see an incredible difference, I promise. So stay tuned for that. What did we pay on this piece? Uh, two dollars on this piece and I am going to ask twenty four dollars all restored and in beautiful shape another wood piece here our fantastic rooster look at the expression on this fellow he's so whimsical absolutely wonderful if you have a rooster or farmyard themed kitchen he has a hook for hanging. There is a little bit of vintage wear here from age. The paint has a little bit of peeling, but that to me just adds to the charm of this lovely, lovely piece. I paid $2 for it and I am going to ask $25. 
Over here, we have our little family sign, and I figured out um, why I was attracted to the font. Let me show you quickly. In our family room area, we have this gorgeous antique uh, stable mirror, and above it, this lovely home sign. And I'm sure you'll agree, the font is very, very similar. And I think that's why I like the family sign so much. As we talked about, the little hanger is on the wrong cross, cross beam there. <laughs> the brand is Sweet Bird Company, but I think you could just put a nail in the wall and uh, hang that uh, piece of wood on the nail with no need for the string. I think I paid two or three dollars for this as well, and I am going to ask eighteen dollars. Let's move forward here before we go too far and miss things like I frequently do. This is a Ganesha. Please correct me if my pronunciation is off. The Hindu god of wealth and prosperity. This is a nice weight. I believe it's heavy resin. Uh, we paid 99 cents for it. It's in great shape. No damage at all, and I am asking $28. The cat in the hat is always a favorite in our house. Uh, this mug depicts the original Dr. Seuss um, image of the cat. He's got some paint splotches and some chalkboard artwork here. It is an oversized mug, nice and big. The cat in the hat uh, spelled out inside. I paid $2 for it and I am asking $15. As I mentioned a couple of videos ago, I am going to be including um, a couple of mugs from my inventory just to uh, give you guys the opportunity to see them. This is super. All you need is love and a dog. Little paw print and heart inside. The brand is Sheffield Home. It is double-sided. I just noticed how beautifully it matches the color of the family sign there. The same lovely, almost sea green. This mug will be $15 as well. How many times do you think, oh goodness, my butter dish is just not big enough. <laughs> this one is fabulous. It's oversized. Absolutely lovely crystal piece. I'm not sure of the brand. It's not marked, but it is lovely. I don't think it's too terribly old, but it is stunning. It would be fantastic on your table. And I believe this one is big enough to accommodate both the really long <laughs> East Coast butter um, quarter cups and uh, little short stubby ones. Um, on the west coast here. I paid, I'm not sure what I paid, a few dollars for this and I am asking $30. This is a beautiful piece of Polish pottery. It's a clock. Now sadly it does need its mechanism replacing but I have ordered one uh, the mechanism and it comes with the hands so as soon as that arrives I will be replacing it here is the signature on the back here it's I believe it's Polish and uh, forgive me if I destroy this Mrozowicz 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 I believe it is uh, I paid four dollars amazingly on this and it had even been there a few days. Um, possibly folks are put off by the fact that it needs a new mechanism, but this um, I am asking $65. It will be in working condition. Let's take a look at these salt and pepper shakers. They came in a baggie. I believe we paid $6 for the baggie. The piece that caught my eye was this. 
Walt Disney World. Definitely vintage. It's a Japanese piece. Its stopper is intact. Sadly, its um, salt or pepper friend was not um, with it. But this is a beautiful display piece. If you uh, collect Disney items, I am asking $8 on this piece. If you love the 80s and you love cats, here's a salt and pepper shaker set for you. Look at this fellow. <laughs> oh, so, so fun. Again, the stoppers are intact. No chips or cracks. A salt and a pepper. This set will be $12. And if you are a reseller and you resell hat pins, salt and pepper shakers are fantastic to display the pins. You stick them in and they, um, they stand up almost like a flower display. I have three nondescript plain white salt and peppers here. It looks like there are two peppers and a salt one. Um, I am asking $12 on the set of three. Look at this strawberry piece. Absolutely love the painting on this. It has a very vintage look, wild strawberries. We paid $3 on this piece and I am asking $18. Let's jump back here and do these two pieces on top of this riser because the riser is something that has been on my bucket list. This is a lovely little toothpick holder. It's blue hobnail, gorgeous shade of sea blue, almost like a sea glass blue. I'm asking $12 on this piece. This is the cobalt we found. It has a lovely swirl to it. You could use this for anything, for toothpicks, for cotton swabs in your bathroom, for shells, for sauces. The uh, possibilities are endless. I'm just catching the light there. Look at those lovely swirls. It is beautiful. Definitely hand uh, blown there. It has the pontal mark on the bottom. I paid 99 cents for it. I am asking $14. So yes, under here we have a riser. It is in a very hard to find color, a sort of a bronzy gold. It's absolutely gorgeous. You could use it as a riser for a vase or a collection. And the brand, as you saw in the video, is Hager. I gave it a wash. <laughs> It was really, really manky, sticky, dirty, but it came out beautifully. It has a vintage look to it, almost like a crazing, but not. It would just be, I think, stunning if you need a bit of height to any display. Uh, I am asking $45 on the Hager riser. Back here is a fantastic piece. I was put off a bit by the scary monkey guarding it. <laughs> but here it is. It reminds me of a cross between a beehive and earthworm cast. It's fabulous. I love it. the color and the glaze on it. It cleaned up really beautifully. I took the liberty of popping a couple of these wooden tulips inside it and how lovely does that look with the uh, vintage tile and board for cheese and crackers and also with this Italian vase. We'll get to that in a minute. But the vase itself, it's definitely a unique piece, an artisan piece, a project piece. It is beautiful. I'm asking $38 on the vase, $12 each on these wooden tulips here. And 
that brings us to this piece. I have never found a vintage piece like this in such perfect condition. And that can only mean that it was displayed instead of being used for many, many years. A lovely fruit basket. The wood is in gorgeous condition. The original label still intact. Gale Craft quality woodenware Japan. Uh, it still has its little feet on the bottom. Just lovely. Paid $2. I am asking $24. This piece is stunning. I found this when Laura Caldwell was in town and we visited the Charleston and Teak Mall together. Now, it's not Bitosi, so don't get too excited. However, I believe it is a Raymore piece. It is marked Italy, probably from Florence, judging by the style. Look at it. It's gorgeous. Absolutely lovely. Now, I know several of you are going to say it has some damage. It has some damage. This is just a little uneven uh, part of the pottery. As you can see, it is glazed over. It is not damaged. It's just a manufacturer's bloop, if you will. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. I'm not sure what I paid for it. It has been on display in my house, uh, but I have acquired uh, the vase that I showed you last week, that lovely anchor bend piece, and it's time for this beauty to move along. I am asking $75 on the Raymore Italian vase. So I had a bit of uh, regret not picking up those two lovely little Japanese dolls. And I know I'm going to get some of you saying, you should have got those. I love them. They were a bit damaged, a bit stained. There was glue. I'm not sure um, if the little boy was uh, missing his hat or if it was supposed to have been glued on. I'm not sure, but I didn't get them, unfortunately. However, I do have this piece. It's a Kokeshi doll. It's a boy doll, which are quite hard to find. Um, as you can see, it is definitely vintage. It's a signed piece. It's beautiful. So if you collect Kokeshi pieces, this is a great size. If you have all the girls, maybe you want to add a boy to your collection. Now look how lovely that looks raised up on this Hager stand. If you have a few more around, it would just be... Um, a stunning accent piece. This guy, I am asking $45. This was a recent acquisition of mine from uh, Michael. Dear Michael, Cult of Vintage, one of my favorite friends. He is fantastic. And I had to buy this just because I wanted to take a look at it. I have never seen a swung vase with cased white inside. I don't know if it's coming through, but inside the blue is this gorgeous white, almost looks like a waterfall in there. Can you see that? Now it does have a few maker's imperfections, a few little striations and bubbles there. And I'm not sure of the maker. Could be Fenton, could be Viking, I'm not sure. It's not signed, it's very unique. As I say, I have never seen the white inside. It does not glow. The um, swung part is lovely. I love this little notch in the top here. Uh, just because it is so unique and I've never seen anything like the colors in this one, I am asking $95 on that piece. Back here is our hydrangea tray. It is melamine. It has beautiful purple and blue hydrangeas with butterflies and uh, some lovely 
little quotes there. I paid $2 on the tray. I am asking $18. Now I brought a few pieces out because they are Easter themed and uh, we are in the season of Easter. I love Easter. This one has a bunny in a watering can, a garden sign, and it goes atop of a candle. You pop it in one of those Yankee candles or the jar candles and it, it radiates the light through these little hearts. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a signed piece and I am asking $32 on this piece. Same artist, just a little bit of a different style here. It's almost actually Christmassy, but I wanted to include it because they uh, almost go together. Red and green, little birdhouse, an angel, not necessarily Christmas, could be spring, again signed. This one is $28. I had a couple of requests for Hummel. Now I don't have trinket boxes, which was what was asked for, but I do have this lovely little plaque. It's a little boy with flowers and a walking stick. It has its original sticker there. And I am asking $12 on the plaque. We also have a little mini Hummel puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, 1982. The little girl with the umbrella. There's the Hummel signature. She's absolutely lovely. I'm not sure how big the pieces are. Let's have a look. Let me just shake it. Bear with me. Oh, they're quite a good size. Let's see how many pieces. A uh, hundred pieces. And I am asking $15 on the puzzle. Oh, here is another piece we found. This is a tiki mug. It's got the sad face on one side happy on the other and it has a lid now I don't know that this lid is original to the cup but it certainly fits well it's a similar color so you could use it as a cup glass or as a storage jar with the, oops with the lid we paid three dollars on it and I am asking twenty two dollars Another mug for your consideration. This is Delft Blue, hand painted in Holland. Holland. Um, it is Heineken themed with a windmill, some beautiful flowers. It has some crazing, as you can see, definitely vintage. I am asking $18 on the mug. We saw that beautiful, almost tiger color, a uh, huge vase, and it reminded me of this piece I have in my in inventory. Now, the last time you saw this, it was all manky with a big candle melted inside, and I cleaned it up. It does have, I have to show you, a, a chippy on the edge there. But if you put the lid on, it's barely noticeable. And then you can turn it around and it is just stunning. It's gorgeous with a candle inside. The tortoise shell color just shines on through. I am asking $22 on that piece. A piece from my booth here, this beautiful art glass piece it is a dish or you could use it probably as a candle i didn't notice that the hall goes all the way down you could put a taper candle in there and put some little beads or glittery bits around just lovely it is clear glass and sort of a satin cased satin glass I am asking $35 on this piece. Let's get into Easter over here. 
We have this lovely bunny radish dish. You could use it for candy, for eggs, even asparagus or radishes. Some little crudités for dips. The flowers are in amazing condition. There are no chips. It has the look of Fitz and Floyd, but it's not signed. I paid $2 for it. I am asking $18 on that piece. I have two of these little baskets here. Now, I was upset because I thought it was cracked on the bottom. And then I looked at the other one, which is the same. So I uh, am sure that this is just part of the manufacturing process. These are perfect for a little posy of flowers, a floating candle or Easter candy. I'm asking $12 on those. This is a Pysanki egg, Ukrainian, possibly Russian. Um, this, it, I found it in this dome, which I will include for you. This is a goose egg. As you can see, it's bigger than a chicken's egg. It has the blow holes in the top and bottom, and the design is stunning. Look at that. I have it resting on a little water bottle cap inside so it doesn't rattle around. I'm asking $45 on the egg. Look at the Easter colors on this Ewer jug. Little individual creamer or pitcher. It's marked Japan. Absolutely lovely drip glaze on this. I am asking $14. This little granny cat is so sweet. She has a bird in a basket. All sorts of intricate detail on her hat and her dress. I did just notice that the little pieces of leaf up here are missing on her hat, but it doesn't take away from her. She is gorgeous. Um, I am asking, with the damage, $12 on her. Next, we have some Easter trinkets here. This sweet little bunny has a basket full of carrots. Look at him. So cute. And this is also a trinket. Two little bunnies with a chick. They're in bed there. These two are figurines. A little magic bunny with a white rabbit and a hat. And uh, mummy goose or mummy duck with her ducklings or goslings here. I am asking $12 a piece on uh, the bunny Easter trinkets. Let's see, we picked up some jewelry uh, at Goodwill. They just restocked the case and I saw some things that I loved. First, this fantastic elephant. He is a pin, really nice size for your collar, for your hat. The detail on him is superb. I'm asking 25 on the elephant. If you love elephants, this bangle is also elephant themed. Little elephants all the way around. It's metal, $12 on that. My camera, I think it gave out uh, in the middle of the jewelry counter, but uh, I found a few more pieces. This is a piece of turquoise. Now I'm not sure whether that is real gold or fill or what it is, but it caught my eye. I love the contrast. The chain is not gold, it is just um, gold tone. But I am asking $24 on the turquoise with the chain. We have some bracelets here, some bangles. This is a lovely piece. Um, it is pewter, marked pewter. Salisbury, Salisbury pewter. It says January on inside. I think they might have had one for every month. This one is January. Beautiful flowers on there. Two more. 
These are silver with inlay. Perfect gift if you have a daughter, granddaughter. This one is purple with shell inlay. And the other one is blue and green, same inlay. I believe they are marked 95. I am asking $22 a piece on the bangles. Under here is our gorgeous vintage pink depression glass divided dish. Now, what I love about this is this, the curve of the divider. Isn't that great? And the beautiful little fleur de -lis almost, the little handles here. It is in lovely, lovely shape. No damage. We paid $2 on it. I am asking $18. One more piece of jewelry we found was this beaded and filigree uh, gold tone piece. It is so boho, absolutely lovely. I paid up for this a little bit. I believe it was $6, but I loved it and I am asking $25. I almost forgot under here is our embroidery. It is by dimensions. It's called the potting shed and it's a garden shed with so many gorgeous flowers and bird houses as a wheelbarrow. Oh, if I had the time, I would so love to do that. That is the actual size it says. Everything is included and the um, fabric is actually printed with the design to make it easier to see uh, what you're doing there. So I think, I don't know that you embroider the whole thing. I think it's cruel and I think you just do here and there accent pieces. It is lovely. I'm asking $25 on that piece. Somebody gave me a great idea. Now is the time to buy um, cruel and embroidery and cross stitch pieces so they can be completed in time for perfect Christmas gifts. You can have them framed for that special someone and uh, it's such a personal gift and it gives you plenty of time if you start now. Let's finish up some other jewelry bits I have. Look at this lovely necklace. It's got crystal bears hanging from it and they're all articulated. Their arms and legs move around. They're almost like Aurora Borealis colored crystals. I'm asking $20 on the bear necklace. Next we have some vintage pins. The first one is a hand mirror and comb. We've got this lovely intricate, almost like filigree gold tone piece here. We have golf clubs with some lovely rhinestones. And this, I believe it's ceramic, very, very old piece here. I think the brand is Jerry's, if I remember correctly. It does have a little bit of paint loss on the girl's knee and on her hand, but it doesn't take away from the charm of this. We also have this Avon piece, a lovely ribbon with faux pearls, fantastic blue crystal piece here. That possibly is antique, that one. And this one with some big crystals here. I am asking $25 on the two crystal pieces and $20 a piece on the other pins. Let's move over here, two pieces left, bear with me. I wanted to bring this out because the colors reminded me of this lovely Portuguese piece. But this piece is from California, 1977 Monterey Art Studio Inc. It is a chalkware wall hanging 
fabulous flowers. It took some cleaning up. It was really, really manky and sticky and dusty. And uh, I did touch up a couple of the flowers that had our usual chalkware paint loss. The worst little uh, chippy is right here. But once it's hanging on the wall, you really can't tell. I had it on my wall for a few weeks here and I have enjoyed it thoroughly. I am asking $35 on this piece. And my favorite find, my sleeper here that was hidden under, what was it hidden under? Oh, it was hidden under the hydrangea tray, wasn't it? Look at this stunning piece. I believe it's from the 70s. It's a Portuguese tile. I took up the sticker and it says made in Portugal. Now it does have some damage at this corner and on this corner and some crazing, but it is incredible. The colors are so vivid. I love the dog and the deer and the horse. I'm telling myself that he is actually trying to train the deer and not doing something nasty to it. <laughs> but uh, it's absolutely stunning, isn't it? And I believe this piece to be worth about $50 to $65. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our thrifting trip to Goodwill and the haul. If you see something you would like to purchase, please send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Please include your name, your mailing address, the item you're interested in, and your offer. I always suggest that you add a couple of dollars over asking price just to give yourself the best chance at winning the item you want. Also, please do check out my new website, thriftingvegas.com. There you will find um, items that are still available some, from some of my past videos. I am loading uh, more and more as we speak, going through boxes, going through boxes that came home with me from my vintage booth. I am trying to make everything I think you will love available to you. Do stay tuned. We have some fun footage of Bear and Rio, our German Shepherds, at... Uh, Floyd Lamb Park, digging in the desert. And also we are going to, as promised, restore this Hawaii tray. And I'm going to show you a little Easter display I did with that fun candy dispenser from the last video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for your positive feedback on my brand new segment, the top five items from my last haul. I'm going to be making this a regular feature in my videos. So here we go. Coming in at number five, our lovely little vintage flower topped milk glass vase. I paid a dollar for it. It sold quickly for $12. At number four, our Magenta Ray Dunn Dream Mug. I paid $2. It's sold for $20. Coming in at number three, the lovely cross stitch of the little girl with her goose. Good friends are the sunshine of life. I paid $5 for it and sold it for $25. At number two, our vintage little gymnast music box. I paid $4, she sold for $45. And without question, in the number one slot, our Holly Hobby Cruel Stitchery. I paid $6, she sold for $60. You might have seen me pick up this fantastic candy dispenser in my last video and I wanted to show you how I styled it in my Easter display.
Several of the treasures we thrifted today were so sticky and dusty that I had to give them a wash as soon as I got them home, including the Hawaii tray. But as you'll see, just some hot soapy water and a touch of mineral oil made all the difference. I have our wood marquetry Hawaii tray in my light box and I'm a little disappointed because the light box is giving it a lot of credit when in actuality it's in pretty rough shape here. The colours are not as vibrant as they seem. But hopefully with some of our butcher block conditioner Howard's mineral oil, this is food grade, um, very, very safe. This is similar to the oil, but it is a little richer. I like to use this on pieces that are going to get uh, use like a tray. So let's liberally drizzle some of this oil on here and hopefully there's going to be a big difference right away as it drips down. You know, I think what I'm going to do is bring it out of the light box to try to give you a more realistic view. I brought us over here to my granite top. And I am just going to take my fingers and rub the oil into the tray here. Get it in all the grain and the cracks. I'm not sure. Are you seeing the difference that I'm seeing here? colors are getting richer and more vibrant. Let's try it here. I'm sure you will see a huge, huge difference. Let me rub this in with my hands and I will show you how it comes out. I am really hope that you can see the difference in this. The colors are richer, a lot more vibrant. There is no dryness anymore. The marquetry is really popping with the contrast of the wood. I love the fact that there's this knot behind the palm tree here. It almost looks like a riptide in a otherwise calm sea or ocean. Beautiful, beautiful tray. Um, don't wait on this. I'm sure it will go fast. Oh, I wanted to show you the cute little uh, are they rivets or There. Are you going to the dog park? Are you going to the park? Are you? Are you excited? Oh my goodness. Where's Rio? Where's Rio? There she is. Mm -hmm. Rio. Rio. All right, Bear. Get him, me. Get him, me. Quite a few of you were interested in what Bear and Rio have been digging for in the desert. Did you get it? 
you were asking if there was maybe something buried or they were hearing animals in the ground but uh, it's actually <laughs> a lot more simple than that are you digging me me are you digging as it turns out, these two goofballs are just digging in the dirt for rocks to bring to mum. Thank you. Did you bring me a rock? <laughs> Bear. Bear. Come on. Bear. Oh, he's a good boy. Rio. the easy way. Ooh.
This is going to be so much fun. I am here at Goodwill, but I'm not alone. <laughs> my oh. mum and my daughter, Miley, are with us. Hello. Wow. Hi, everyone. <laughs> what are we going to look for today? <laughs> uh, stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Cut. I was not prepared for